Ja, praise Ja, praise Ja. Hallelujah. How's the family of Yah doing? House of Israel, hallelujah. Another day, huh? Hallelujah. How many people been tried already this week? Boy, it's unanimous, huh? But how many of us are thankful for them trials? Looking at it as something that's going to sharpen your life, huh? As the word says, all things work together for the good. To the called, <laughs> yes. Yeah, I thank y'all for them too. Ah, bless y'all. Before we start here on this second uh, scripture study, thank y'all for the privilege again to be before the people of y'all, my family. And I say, you know, I say that with much, uh, much depth. <laughs> and many of us can say that with much depth. Hallelujah, especially as we immerse ourselves more and more in this walk. I praise Yah. Before we start, let's go to our King, our Savior, our Elohim. Our blessed Heavenly Father, in the wonderful name Yeshua. Thank you for another day, Most High. All faculties in place, Most High. Just pray, Most High, your blessings upon Scripture study again, Most High, by your grace and by your mercy. Just ask, Most High, the Spirit of wisdom, knowledge, and understanding be imparted. It will strengthen thy brethren, thy children, Most High, and the ones you call the Hebrews. We do bless you and praise you, glorify and thank you in the wonderful name of Yeshua. Hallelujah. Amen. Y'all may be seated. It's an amazing thing, you know, as I was, you know, preparing parts of this. It's amazing that, you know, we've had some that come here and have tasted the good word of Yah, tasted of his spirit, tasted of the fellowship, and have left here bitter. It's amazing, you know, how impeccable. Their timing is, but it's not impeccable. You know, it's, it's the Hasatan. You know, it just, <laughs> it's just amazing the shame that people have to foam out to get some kind of release. You know, I'm trying to, you know, keep my mind on this message and everything, and all of a sudden, you know, getting text from uh, someone who used to be here, breathing out their slaughterings and their bitterness and their hates, and I'm like... Man, these folks, these folks have no fear of Yah. And that's a sad thing, to be here and have the fear of Yah and then depart and don't have it no more. And it really, really brings us the word to pass that the, the, the last state of them is worse than their beginning. You know, you know Pastor Gee, he gets a lot of... Uh, you know, backlash and all kinds of just stupid crap from people's just immaturity, uh, jealousy, envy, whatever it may be. You know, and he endures it. And I think, you know, by the power of the Holy Spirit, we endure a lot of things. Really, a lot of this stuff, you know, roll off our backs like water on the duck. You know, because we know as the people we are, the one that, that, that really we're looking for the judgment from is from the Most High Yah. His judgment matters the most. You know, if we're walking uprightly, if we're walking truly, we're walking just, just, then that is our shield and our buckler. That is our strength. That is our confidence as the people of Yah. So whatever they say, what the hell is it? Why should it bother us? Why should it just cast us down? No. I just use it as a strengthening tool. Now I'd sit there and listen to your brutish voice. And it is sad that, you know, that we have to talk on this and then give warnings. Touch not the apple of Yah's eye. Touch not His anointed. And these people don't believe it. They don't understand all this chaos and all this crap going on in their life because of their own fruit of their own doings. So, you know, we pray to our enemies that their own doings, their own traps, their own pits, their own snares be laid at their own feet. They fall back into it themselves. Their own ignorance, their own dumbness, they still won't realize this is because of what I've done. But they'll lash out at each one of us. You're the cause, you're the cause, you're the cause. Watch your mouths out there. Watch your mouths. I don't care who you think you are. It 
it's sad. You're in a sad state. You're in a damn state and don't know it. But to each his own, I guess. Praise Yah. I'm going to do something, you know, here. That in the next scripture studies I do, as they consecutively done, as they are most high allows them to be done, I'm going to go kind of go back in what they call retro. An old teaching I used to do, but I'm going to bring it up again with a little bit more understanding. Something for our time and our hour. Something for us. Because we've got a lot of new people in the ministry. And a lot of people don't understand the pattern of Yah, the deep depth of Yah, the mind of Yah. And this is one tool, one teaching, I believe, that can help them understand. Especially us that immerse ourselves in the feast days. And it's a good thing to immerse yourselves in the things of Yah. Because these people out here, let themselves, let them immerse themselves in their jealous, their envy, let them backbite, devour one another. They'll go on. They'll fall away. We'll keep our eyes on the Most High. We'll keep our hand on the plow. And we'll hold on. Together as the family of Yah. Praise Yah. All right, saints. Thus saith Yahweh, the heaven is my throne, and we know heaven is just immense. And I mean, it's, it's just some, I guess, can't be measured. But just think, he says, the heaven is my throne, but he says, the earth is my footstool. And he just prop his feet up on it. Huh? And he asks this, where is the what? House. House that who build unto me? Who's saying this? Who's asking this? He, he's saying heaven is my throne. Why is he asking this? If, if uh, heaven is, he can throw his throne in the mansiness of heaven and he can prop his feet up on the earth, then he's asking for a house to be built unto him? The prophet, huh? Prophet, huh? And he says, you know, where is the house that ye build unto me? And where is the place of what? Who said this? He's like seeking a place of rest in a house, huh? But heaven is, is, is my throne. Earth is my footstool, and you, you know, you physically look at this, and you think of this naturally, and you're like, wow. But he's asking for a place of dwelling, for us to build a place of, do, of dwelling unto him. And in, in, in the house that you build unto me, is it going to be the place of my rest? Hmm. It's interesting, huh? Interesting that the Most High would ask that house a dwelling or it can be the whole estate just as we ourselves are individual houses we know the word calls us houses even though you, you, you know you would say that to an unlearned person out there in the world and you call yourself a house and they go you call yourself a tree and they go but we know what the most high is talking about don't we but house is a dwelling. How many of us live in a house? Just about everybody in here. So everybody's associated with a house. Everybody understands what a house is, huh? Everybody lives in the house. They know the, uh, the functions of the house, what the house is built for. Many of us have been, been, I guess, immersed in the building of houses. Many of us have watched houses be built. You know, what goes into building the house and the materials, everything that goes into it. I mean, it's very intricate. It's a lot. Oh, it's going into a house. Then the Most High is asking, what house will you build unto me? Where is the place of my rest? So a dwelling, house, a dwelling, or the whole estate. So we collectively, been many, we being ourselves as a house, we are together, Israel, are the house of Israel. We collectively are a dwelling. You know, we're in this world, but we're not of this world. 
and, this, and like I said in parentheses, the body of Christ. Like, like we see, and that's what we see naturally, huh? Nice little house, got a roof, got windows, got an entrance, got a door. Got a door in the front, got a door in the back. And we can, you know, really look in ourselves and see, you know, our framework, you know, under the same construction, under the same pattern, right? We have doors in our house. We have an eye gate, and we have an ear gate, and we got a mouth gate. And, you know, and we, you know, as stewards of this house, we got to keep watch of the windows, of what's coming in the door, what's coming in and around our estate, especially as the, the house of Israel, how the Most High all the time admonished His children to be mindful of the house and not let the other nations come and try to defile thee. Well, it's amazing, you know, that, 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 that natural thing, first that which is natural, then that which is spiritual. Only the people of Yah can really understand this. Because that, that, that right there, that pattern, that structure and everything, we know where it originates from. We know where its genesis is from. Because all of us have been immersed in the understanding because we lived in it, right? We've experienced it. We know what a house is. But we do, I know, as we know that house, do we know this house? And do we know this house? Like we know that house. Well, you know, the house of this world takes a lot of upkeep, don't it? Whew. This world's something else. Nothing lasting in this world. Because, you know, this world being under sin, corruption's going to take hold of that house, right? Just as, you know, we're here in our temporary tabernacle, we see each and every day how corruption is trying to take hold of us. We know we ain't going to live. This body ain't going to live forever. It's under a boundary. It's in a capsule of time. It's appointed a certain time, and then it's no more. Just like inside of a house. What do we have inside of a house? Many rooms. Many rooms. And each room is furnished for what it's used for. Now, if we're going to eat in the dining room, we've got a table to put food on. We've got a room that is actually take a bath, use the bathroom. There's certain instruments, there's certain furniture in there that, that's within that room for a certain function, certain purpose, just as we are. We ourselves know that we are composed of many rooms. And we're learning day by day to, to get into our closets and pull out all the crap that we have shoved into the closets. We've got a lot of rooms that we have locked the door to. You know, each one of these rooms has a door, has an entryway. The only way to get in, you've got to open the door. If you don't open the door, you ain't got access. It says, for the invisible things of him, talking about Yahweh, from what the creation of the world are clearly seen. Huh? The invis what? The things that are not seen. This is to the people of Yah. For us to understand first that which is natural, then that which is spiritual. He showed us many, many, many infallible proofs. We read from Genesis to Malachi. Genesis to Malachi about a temporal time. Temporal time. A fleshly time. And then when Yeshua come on the scene, put himself upon the tree, rent the veil, then he opened the way into the Spirit. We see, you know, from Genesis to Malachi, a lot of history, a lot of record about the natural. And who was, in, who was immersed in this natural? Israel. Israel. Israel, read the account of all what this house went through. 
what all this house suffered, how this house was plundered, how this house was fortified, how this house would build it up, how this house was beautified, and how they let the outside, the inhabitants uh, all around them come in and, and, and desolate the house. When the Most High built that house only for a certain people, only for his children. Not everybody is his children. Not everybody is Hebrews. Because a lot of people out there calling themselves Hebrews and they're still living under the bondage of fear of death. Whereas those of us who have received the Spirit have passed from death unto life. We're no longer under that bondage. We're no longer in that house. And we've got to realize that we're now occupants of a different house. For the invisible things of Him, Yahweh, from the creation, from the beginning of the world, are clearly seen. How? How are they clearly seen? How are they clearly seen? How do we clearly see invisible, invisible things? Being understood by the things that are made. The reason why I'm taking this trying to slow and kind of simple because we've got a lot of new people coming into this. And we've got to take footsteps, small footsteps, small understandings to build upon. Our foundation is always going to be Christ. And even as I teach, I've got to be careful how I build their own. Because my intent and my purpose as an administration as a teacher is to impart something unto you. Until you understanding. It might be a little bit kind of different scripture study, but it's something that's going to help you understand, you know, the structure. The structure. And the things of Yah, the reason why He structures them the way He does. But the, for the invisible things of Him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made. Even his eternal power and Godhead. See, again, we are the house of Yah, collectively and individually. And the house of Yah really needs to come together. I, I know in this time you hear the word restoration. You even hear it echoed again in Acts. And we're still in the time of the restoration and the rebuilding of the tabernacle of David. And the biggest thing I see that's going on in the tabernacle of David from his time that he sojourned, the little time he sojourned on this earth, biggest part, you know, of that house was praise and worship. Praise and worship. Because you can see it. You can see it in his psalms how he was immersed in. I mean, he poured out of his being everything he is immersed in. And, and, and it's very, very sad that a lot of people calling themselves Hebrews in this time and this hour and have not been immersed in anything. You know, we... we Hear pastor talk about communities, communities. They say, you know, a community is in itself a house. It is a family. And we immerse ourselves with one another because we desire to enter into love. We think we are living our lives when we, our lives should have been ended. The life which we now live and should be living and be His life, Yeshua HaMashiach's. That's what we read, you know, the report from. We're learning from his life so that we can walk in this life. His life gives us strength to get through this life. Especially as the children of Yah. Because we're in his house. We're in his house and he's going to instruct us. He's going to help us build our house. It's an amazing thing. What house will you build me? Asking you this. And then all from cover to cover, he's given us instructions on how to build a house. Our own houses. And we see a lot of people rejecting the reproofs and the admonishings and the exhortations because they won't build a house for the Most High Yah. 
Because sometimes construction, it gets violent. Sometimes something gets measured wrong, gets cut wrong, gets nailed wrong. It has to be torn down and rebuilt again. And a lot of people do not want to be rebuilt again. Because they're not living his life. They got a part of their life they've got to, got to fulfill. But those of us who have been in this many years, we have come to the understanding it's no longer our life. Even Paul himself, in the life which I now live in the flesh, even though I'm in this fleshly house, I live by the faith of the Son of God. It's not my faith, it's His faith that's helping me live. It's His faith that's helping me eat. It's His faith that helps me to have my being. My being is because of Him. It comes to the understanding of being immersed. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. Because Yeshua had to come down and tear down that former house. And build in twain one new man. And we're learning that life. We're learning how to be stewards in His house. He says, in my house, in my house are many mansions. I go to prepare a place for you. I thought I was already in a place. No, there's a place being prepared. But while you're being prepared, get yourself ready for the place. The house of Yah. We know in this world, and this existence, and this temporal, we also have the house of Satan. And these houses, you really boil down the war that's going on in our time. The war that's been going on in this temporal realm has been a war against the house of Yah and the house of Satan. That is an understanding if you would actually learn. If you would just actually just submit yourself. How many years ago I used to, you know labor and teach on the tabernacle and be many I watch you know just look at them they would be not interested thinking this don't mean nothing ha 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 this is stupid blah blah and they're no longer here thinking you know this this is a small thing but what do we understand are we learning how to live in the house of Yah and as living in the house, yeah, how are we learning to be a house for Yah? We've got two houses. Many times our former conversation, we were the house of Satan. And many of us, have, I give testimony of that. Why? How do you have this testimony? Because you were immersed in it. This is a background. This is a contrast to where you are now. Even though we don't look back, our eyes are forward. But those are the things to remember for us, our memory, to know where we have been. And do we want to return to that vomit as I had to tell that person today? Amazing you go hug the crap of the world and go return to, to like licking up its vomit. And it is sad to hear that warning. You've tasted. You've handled the word of Yah. And you turn away. And he says, there is no more, therefore, no redemption. No more sacrifice for sins. And once you depart out of the house in that manner, you're not returning. You're not returning. Two houses at war. It says in Mark 3.25, and if a house be divided against itself, and that's what the house of Satan would like the house of God to be, divided. Even though in the house there's many divisions, but you notice in that house there's division between the bathroom and the hallway and the bedroom and the living room and the kitchen. And there are more divisions that still, even in them divisions, that house is still all one. We see even in this house the Most High Ah 
has set forth golds of vests, gold, vessels of gold and vessels of silver, vessels of wood, hay, and stubble. But he has vessels in his house. We are, how many of us consider ourselves a vessel? And I really think, you know, what is a vessel used for? Most vessels are used for, you know, to be empty at the time that the, the master needs them so that he can pour something into them and be of use to him. This is, this is the house of Yah, the house of giving, the house of love. No jealousy, no strife, no anger, no unrighteous anger, that is. And such like in his house, or should be, because a div house divided against itself, that house cannot stand. And I'm thinking, why can't it stand? I mean... What is the real, the, 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 the true structure or the understructure that's keeping the house up? Keeping the house abreast? Keeping the house strong? And if there's division within the house, it says that house is going to fall. And, and we have immersed ourselves in this word and see how the house of Israel, when they did come divided, how that house was split. Israel and Judah. And how that house failed. How it was delivered unto other nations. Other nations come and lived in that house. And did they, 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 they fare well with that house? And the furniture of that house? But if a house be divided against itself, that house cannot stand. 2 Corinthians 5.1 For we, there's only a certain we. I'm speaking to the Hebrews. Yah is speaking to his children. Yah is in his house speaking to you. And somehow, someway, I hope the Spirit is in your house ministering something to you. Even though these bodies may be tired, keep that mind and that spirit active. For we know that if our earthly house, and everybody looks to themselves, oh, my earthly house. You know, the people of the world don't really like, you know, their earthly house. That's why they got to put all this makeup and stuff on and hide themselves. <laughs> and they got to do all these antics and all this cutting and all this piercing to make, you know, their house acceptable to other houses. You know, all, that, you know, all these houses out there are divided against one another, trying to, you know, to one-up one another. And their clothing and their piercing and their talking, you know, these houses are something else. For if we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle, talking about, were dissolved, talk about this, this thing no longer exists. It no longer has life. It's no longer animated. It says we, again, we have a what? Building of God. Building of Yah. We have a building of Yah. That's where our conscience and our mind should be. We have a building of Yah waiting on us. Didn't he say he goes to prepare a place for us? But it says, a house, what? A house not made with hands. And we saw a natural house. And we look at that house 100 years from now, you think that house is going to look the same way? Wonder why. That house is going to dissolve in this, eternal, uh, this temporal realm, ain't it? But just to think, man, I've got a house in the eternal realm. I've got an inheritance. I've got something waiting. You know, you know. Then if I keep the good fight of this faith... The salvation of my soul will be made secure and sealed. I got a house made, not, not made with hands. Because of any of us, how many of us have been immersed in building a house with your hand? Any of us have nailed a nail? Anybody else has used a saw and cut wood? Just in this experience and this understanding, that which is natural, then that which is spiritual. That's how the people of Yah transist 
transcend this understanding the way the Most High Ah speaks to His children. And this house is eternal. In the heavens, heaven is His throne. Earth is His footstool. And He's going to ask you, Son, child, where's the house you're going to build me? But yeah, you got the heaven and you got the earth to prop your feet on. You know, what am I? What am I? What is he really saying? What is, is he really communicating to us as children? Hmm. He desires us to be in his house, huh? Eternal in the heavens. Hebrews. But Christ, 3, 6, as a son over his own house, whose house are Oh, I'm a child. I'm like, wow. A child, I'm like, wow. We are your house most high. Yes, yeah, that's what the word says. I believe that report. And I can really, really testify of that because I've been immersed in it. And every one of you sitting in here can say you have been immersed in it. A lot of people out there speaking on things they have not been baptized in at all. Why you hear pastors saying you know nothing. Go gather yourselves in the cities and say, Iron sharpeneth iron. We've really got an understanding to, uh, to understand what, what house we are, what house we are in. The one that has been built for us and the one that is built for us. But it says, Christ, as a son over his own house, whose house are we, if. Pivotal words, huh? If, two-letter word that's like, kaboom! <laughs> Everybody ever read the word like that? You know, the pivotal words like, if. <laughs> so, we'll be his own house if we, the children, hold fast the confidence and that's not our own confidence. That's not no confidence we have volated in ourselves. That's his confidence. And began the rejoicing of the hope firm. We stand fast. We, we were straight faced. And I'm going to the kingdom. No matter what storm. No matter what. Because I know my house is upon a rock. And it's not upon the sand. Yes. And like he said, how many of us have been tried this week? Any storms come to the house? Huh? It's amazing, you know, when we see a storm coming, you know. And when you hear it, run through the house, close the door, close the windows and everything. Shouldn't we do it within ourselves? How many of us, you know, passively, passively, maybe this week forgot to close one window? Forgot to lock the door? Come to think about it. I mean, uh, first that was a natural, then that was a spiritual. Come on. Hallelujah. But well, we have a house not made with hands. And I'm like, but most I, all my understanding and all I've been immersed in is a house is made with hands. So I've got to really look at this a little farther. I've got to look at it the way he looks at it to have understanding. And I thank God to be a child of God that I can, you know, submit myself and be a child and sit at the Father's feet and say, teach me. But Christ has a son over his own house, whose house we are, if we hold fast our confidence, rejoice and firm unto the end. But ye also, as lively stones. We call it a house. Now we're called a stone. 
But it tell them sometimes, you know, houses are built out of stone, ain't they? A good, strong house is built out of stone, right? But ye also, as lively, lively. You know, a lot of people come in here for the first time, and you know, they see praise and worship, you know, on Sabbath morning. All these lively stones jumping around. And they're like, because <laughs> we understand that we are lively. Because we know that uh, Christ will come into the midst of us and will sing praises unto His name. Because Christ, as a son over His own house, He's in the midst of us. That's why we praise and we worship. Because we connect with Him. Our, and ye also as lively stones are built up, up, up a spiritual house on holy priesthood to offer up what kind of sp sacrifices? Spiritual sacrifices acceptable to Yah God by who? So who's doing all this in you? Who's, all, who's doing this in the house? Jesus. Because there's that big word again, by. <laughs> How be it, Acts 7 and 48, the Most High dwelleth not in temples made with hands, as saith the prophet. Heaven is my throne, earth is my footstool. What house will you build me, saith Yahweh? Or what is the place of my rest? Again, Corinthians tells us this, Know ye not that ye are what? The temple of Yah, temple of God, and that the Spirit of Yah, Spirit of God, dwelleth in you? Do we know this? Do we know this of a truth? Do we really, 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 really know it? Do we know it externally? And it's all up here? Or we didn't know it from... The inner post part of the house. And it's expressed in praise and worship, conversation throughout the week. We are the temple of Yah. And that the Spirit of Yah, where is He? And we're building a house for Yahweh. And it says, if any man defile the temple of Yah, him shall Yah destroy. For the temple of Yah is holy, which temple ye are. See? This temple, this body, this being, we have one body here. What we see we have the flesh man, the external man. We have the soul man, the one that's the mind, the will, the emotions. And we have the innermost man, which is the spirit man. The people of the world don't have this. The people of the world operate either in this one or this one. We being born again. This is the man that has been born. He is in the innermost part of this tabernacle. We've got to understand that. We've got to understand the, the, the way we understand the invisible things of Yah are the things that are made. And we look at, you know, just man in himself. Spirit. Soul, body. Spirit plus soul plus body equals and this temporal realm. But there's a reason the way it's made this way. Hebrews 8 and 5. These things serve 
unto the example and shadow of what? Heavenly things. What? We are heavenly beings. We really got to understand we're sojourners. We're pilgrims here. You hear pastor all the time trying to remind us we are a spiritual people. We, we have lived the natural life. We have passed from that death. Now we've passed into life. Shadow of heavenly things. As Moses was admonished of Yah, of God, when he was about to make the tabernacle. Before Moses made the tabernacle, he was up. Fellowship and communion with the Most High Yah. Forty days. Forty nights. Just think, you know, that, that realm of that suffering with the Most High Yah. Not, and then this suffering is not the suffering that the world teaches. But this suffering is, you know, being taught of the Most High Yah. Suffering the reproof. Suffering the rebuke. Suffering the admonishing. Suffering the exhortation. Suffering the grinding. Suffering the, the forgiving of one another. We suffer one another, but in a good form. We are suffering unto life, while the world out there is suffering unto death. So we, our minds really got to get into the house of Yah and the way He thinks. We got to look at, you know, the wise master builder and His mind, the way He has fashioned us. And when you is using this tabernacle, Earthly tabernacle, temporal tabernacle for this purpose. For see, saith he, tell Moses, all right, you see what is all here in the heavenly. See, saith he, that thou make all things according to the what? Pattern. Show to thee in the mount. What was this pattern? A worldly sanctuary. Guess where Yah is? Even though all Israel, three camps here, three camps here, three camps here, three camps in the rear, all around, guess where Yah is? In the midst. In the midst of His people at that time. Yah, <laughs> He says, I change not. I mean, you look at this, and this is a shadow of things to come as we read. When we read that word, are we going to interpret this word with the word? Huh? Are you going to repair a Chevy truck with a Ford part? I mean, you're going to take odd things and try to put them together to make something one, no. But Yah dwelling in the midst of His people. Hebrews 9, 1 through 10. It says, Then verily, the first covenant had also ordinances of divine service and a worldly sanctuary. For there was a tabernacle made, the first, wherein was the candlestick and the table and the showbread, which is called the sanctuary. And after the second veil, the tabernacle, which is called the holiest of all, which had the golden censer and the ark of the covenant overlaid round about with gold, wherein was the golden pot that had manna, and Aaron's rod that budded, and the tables of the covenant. And over it the cherubims of glory, shadowing the mercy seat, of which we cannot now speak particularly. Now when these things were thus ordained, the priests went always into the first tabernacle, accomplishing the service of Yah. But into the second went the high priest alone once every year, not without blood, which he offered for himself and for the heirs of the people. And the Holy Ghost, this signifying that the way into the holiest of all was not yet made manifest. I look at that and go, what? 
the way into the holiest of all, but you just told me that the high priest went once a year into the holiest of all. But what is he telling us here? That the way into the Holy of Seol was not yet made manifest while as the first tabernacle was yet standing. And a lot of people are, you know, if you're still struggling trying to receive the Holy Spirit, then that must, I must let you in on something. That first tabernacle must be still standing. When I'm talking about that old earthly man, that old sinful man, that old ungodly man, as Yeshua himself said, hey, I'm not going to put new wine into old wine skins. You think he's going to put uh, 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 an outsider, a heathen, a publican, a whoremonger into his nice Freshly built house? But the way into those y'all was not made manifest while the first tabernacle was yet standing. And it says, which was a figure for the time then present, in which were offered both gifts and sacrifices that could not make him that did the service perfect. So we're... And now, in the same service, but now we're able to enter into the holiest of all, and we're now able to enter into the perfection. Which will go on in later studies. This will be opened up more. Which stood and only meets and drinks and adverse washings and carnal ordinances and imposed on them until the time of the Reformation. Because you know, really, 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 the power of Christ didn't really show itself until He put that first house upon a tree. Took it out of the way, nailing it to the cross. That booger was contrary to us, and we know and we are immersed how much this natural body, this fleshly body, how much is contrary to us with its carnal ordinances and its carnal laws. He do away the first, that he may establish the second. See the tabernacle. Quick here. You see it has a boundary. It has a realm of what they call fencing. It has a, what they call a court or curtain fence. And it has an entrance gate. Notice this is a house. This is a tabernacle. And it has many rooms in it. And we'll, as we go on in the study, we'll learn about this. We'll learn about this. We'll go into the court here. Learn about the bronze altar. Bronze labor. Then we'll go into this two-part tabernacle, as we just read. There's a tabernacle here and a tabernacle here. There's a veil here and there's a veil within there. But you got the sanctuary, entering into the sanctuary, and then the Holy of Holies as the innermost part. Again, we see it's, it's divisions, but it's still all of one. Holy of Holies, where the Ark of the Covenant is, the holy place, where the menorah, the showbread, and the altar of incense, where the services were done, where we, the saints of Yah, do daily. Yes, then we have the outer court where's the altar of burnt offerings and then a place to wash yourself in the outer courtyard. And we'll get later on in the study, we'll break these down individually. First that which is natural, then that which is spiritual. So you see in the divisions, holy of holies, spirit, Holy place, sanctuary, soul. Remember the man? Remember the man? Same layout, huh? We are the temple of Yah. Back then, the worldly sanctuary, 
Yah dwelt here. But now he dwells. So man has a body, soul, and a spirit. So as the place of administration was in the wilderness. Holy of Holies was the spirit. Holy place was the place of the soul. The outer court, the body. It's amazing for us, you know, when we start in praise and worship, we have to start out in the outer court. We've got to go here first, you know, and lay something upon this altar of sacrifice. We've got to sacrifice. I don't want to do this. I don't feel like this. You know, and you get rid of this and get rid of that. And we've got to get it all burnt up here. And we ain't got all that burnt and get all the sacrifice. We've got to go wash ourselves. Then while we wash ourselves, we look, we look within the basin and we see a reflection of yourself. Just don't forget that reflection. <laughs> but praise and worship does start here. You've got to enter in first. You know, you're going to start it out in, you know, in the flesh. You're going to start out in the order court, you know, when you get, get done with, the, you know, this, this, this uh, service here. And then, once you, get, you know, get this done, you can enter into the soul. You can get your mind and your will and your emotions in it. But you're still all of one. Man, once, you know, you got the body, got the soul in it, now you can tell you all that and get into the spirit. Now. Now you're in the house of Yah. <laughs> Psalm 27 and 4 tells us this. One thing have I desired, and the tabernacle of David is being reared up again. One thing have I desired of Yahweh that I will seek after. That I may dwell. Where? And the house of Yahweh all the days of my life. Why, why, why do I want and to endure to be in the house of Yahweh all the days of my life? To behold the beauty of Yahweh and to inquire in His temple. So when we're in supplication and prayer, we've got to get into the house. As we seek after that me way dwell in the house of Yahweh. Praise Yah, saints of the Most High Yah. It's just a small introduction before we go in deeper. A little kind of living course here. A little foundation. Praise Yah. Pray somehow, some way that you know this is a little food for thought. A little bit more understanding as it will... And, you know, the, the understanding of this has unlocked a lot of this, you know, understanding the life of Christ even from this. Because this is all, this is all a, of a testimony of his life. All it is. The way, the truth, and the life. Truth, the way, and the life. And it's good in our eyes as the children of Yah. You know, we know many of us are in our so with earthly tabernacles quite quite tired. Mine is. But you know, I thank Yah for his spirit, for his strength, you know, to allow me to be able to minister to my brothers and sisters, my family. This is what he's poured in me to do. And a lot of people don't understand this measure that the most high Yah pours himself into certain vessels. He pours himself into each and every one of you to do of his work, to do of his deed. And we don't need, need, need to be against one another. We need, a, we need our house to be strong. We don't need a divided house as we in most high is talking to us about. So let the word of Yah bind us together, knit us together in love. Just a small understanding there that is so immense. It is. Saints of the Most High, Yah. And we thank Yah for it, for Him to give us the grace and mercy to, to enter into it. It's not a small thing. Not a small thing. We can see it clearly. We've been immersed in it. They can't see it out there. That's why they speak evil of the things which they understand not. And even that understanding, let them go speak evil because I know you don't understand. With that, my shield and my buckler is strong. 
Word is a lamp and a light unto our feet. It is our bulwark. We really just let it be a defense for us. We let our life get in the way. We can see a divided house, huh? We can see, you know, the flesh warring against the spirit and the spirit lusting against the flesh. We kind of got to deal with this war every day. But we're still building a house. We're still building a house, and he is instructing us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ah, praise Yah. Thank you, Most High Yah, for your grace and your mercy, for your life, for everything you are that you get us this far, Most High. Just get us home, Most High. They that endure to the end, the same shall be saved, Most High, and we want to make it home. Let it help us keep our hand on the plow, not to look back, but hold on. We bless you this day. Thank you for the safe arrival. Pastor, Brother Brett and all the saints there, Elias, saints that are helping out with the building project, with the, the house that's being built there, Most High. We are all one, and we thank you for this love, this unity, Most High, you're building amongst us. Keep it strong, Most High. Only you can do that. To glorify you and praise you in the wonderful name of Yeshua. Hallelujah. Amen. Bless you all, saints.